Good evening. Welcome to the Red Hook Town Board meeting of March 29th, 2017. Would you kind of be kind enough to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you very much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we have uh, again this evening, and I beg your patience as we um, continue to try to use technology to bring the meeting closer to you at home. Um, this is the agenda, Steve, if you'd be kind enough to uh, scroll for the folks at home that we have prepared for this evening. get started then as we do every first meeting of the month this is now a rescheduled meeting we're going to uh, start with the supervisor's report this is a statement for the period ending February 28 2017 We have a opening balance of $3,625,804, receipts of $252,177, disbursements of $310,603, leaving a remaining balance of $3,567,377. We also have uh, statements, as always, our bookkeeper has provided for you. I haven't looked at this closely in, in a while, and, and we used to have um, adjustments to show what what has happened out of the predict essentially changes to the predicted flow of funds. And they, they're in here, but it doesn't show the new one. Like this shows 13,608 funds. You're talking about the budget adjustments now? The, the budget adjustments. Right? Okay. And I, I don't know whether the public wants to, wants to know those or not. Right, yeah. The That's budget. The, yeah, the budget adjustments are listed uh, page one, two, and three, and you see they're very uh, minor in nature. Yeah. Yeah, um, I can see the, the summary in the back. I'm just looking at the summary. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's missing is the CPF, the monthly report of CPF uh, revenues. Right. Well, actually, we, we do have that figure from at the last meeting. We did? Yes, we did, because um, I reported the AUD results, the full year results for 2016. AUD, What's AUD? <laughs> AUD, that's our audited uh, financials that oh. we submit mm -hmm. February. But I can I can direct you to where our CPF is on the report if you like. It's on here? It doesn't show. Well, the bank balance is there. Yeah. Sorry. On the front page. But that's what you're looking if for. You, yeah. yeah, it doesn't show anything there, just except at the very bottom up above. Mary, if you look at yeah. this, Community Preservation 204 at the bottom of the first page. Yeah, I see it. Okay, $747,000 yeah. yeah. is in the fund right now. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, we don't have any applications for CPF funds. But so we do have a preliminary commitment. But we do have a preliminary commitment for... Stickle. Stickle property, and I believe that's a little over $100,000 for that share. 
And as you know, we're leveraging that money mm -hmm. with the state for the Stuckel property and with the land trust. And uh, we used to keep it keep it running the, the running uh, um, monthly monthly balance for at least one page, which was well, maybe, it's there. maybe a bit more than we need. Harry, I'm yeah. sorry. If you take a look at it, it is there at the bottom of that page. No, the, that's the total amount, right? But, no, yeah. I'm just. Hmm? It, it shows the receipts for the month of February for that fund. And. And the adjusted total, right? First column is the opening balance, second column receipt. On the bottom of the page, yeah. you need reservation. Two oh four. Okay, okay. The receipts is seventy two hundred dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And for the folks at home. We're referring to the front page of the supervisor's report down there at the bottom, CM Community Preservation. Any other questions? All right, do we have a motion to approve the supervisor's report? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you very much. Um, also, we have our town clerk's report this evening. Did you want to do the budget adjustments or? Yeah, we should. Yeah, we'll do the budget adjustments. Is there a motion to approve them as well? So, so moved. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. All right, Sue. <clears throat> Town Clerk Report, February 2017. Total local shares remitted to supervisor to the town for um, the town revenue, $1,939.88. Amount remitted to New York Ag and Markets for the spade and neuter program, $52. Amount remitted to New York State Department of Health for marriage <coughs> licenses, $157.50. Amount remitted to New York State Environmental Conservation, and that's for sporting licenses. $23.62 for total state, county, and local revenue of $2,173. Pursuant to section 27 sub 1 town law, I hereby certify that the foregoing is a full and true statement of all fees and monies received by me, Sue McCann, town clerk, town of Red Hook during the period stated above in connection with my office. And I also have the um, two abstracts, one for January and one for February. Um, abstract vouchers 21431 through 21579 for a total abstract of $286,717.86. Uh, I hereby certify that voucher number 21431 through 21579 processed in the month of January or an accurate reporting of the abstracts approved for payment by the town board. Then there's February. 2017 vouchers 21580 through 21672 and the total abstract is $126,796.16 and I hereby certify that those vouchers 21580 through 21672 processed in the month of February are an accurate reporting of the abstracts approved for payment by the town board. And that's it. Thank you very much, Sue. Is there a resolution to approve, the motion rather, to approve the town clerk's report? So move. Second. All right. Any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't have any announcements uh, this evening, um, except to say that we hope to have our annual cleanup day um, April 22nd. It's hot off the presses. Um, that is... Um, also Earth Day, and there'll be uh, more details as to time. Um, the location is here at Town Hall, and so uh, we will post something on the town's website when we have more de details available. Anybody else have any announcements? I was just looking up the, there'll be the um, annual Easter egg hunt in the village at um, London, Maker, uh, London uh, Avenue, rather, Middle School lawn. 
wow. on April 8th. Oh, on April 8th is when the Easter egg hunt will be. And I was just trying to look up the time. I I know it's in the morning, but... It's always early, like yeah, 9 or 9 so. 9 or so. Yeah. Something. Anyway, it'll be on, you know, probably our website and other websites. So stay tuned. But that will be April 8th. So that's in very, very soon. Okay. Any other announcements, Harry? No. Okay. Oh, actually, it says it starts at 11. So 11? Oh, it's later this year. Also, 11. Yeah. Well, it's also opening You're... opening day for soccer, so that's probably, I wonder if that's the, uh, maybe they coordinated, which would be nice, because the little kids play soccer at 9, so that's now everybody April. can participate. That's April 8th. Yeah. I thought you were going to say it's also some other day. It is. Yes. But you don't have to say what no. date that is. I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Um, it's that time for public comments. We have two of you, so. Um, I'm two minutes top. So, Mark, would you like to go first? Please? Thank you very much. Okay. And if you would be kind enough just just to state your name for, I will, the, for I, the I, yeah. microphone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Bache of Landmark Properties, and I'm the owner of the property on Feller Newmark, known as the Preserve at Lakes Kill. I'm here to go on the record to inform the Red Hook Town Board that the preserve at Lakes Kill has the Red Hook Planning Board's final plat approval, not a conditional approval as was stated by the board uh, at your last board meeting. There is no contest before the Planning Board as was opined by Councilman O'Neill who further found that the road name approval request premature and objectionable for the county to ask for. The county isn't asking for anything. It is me who is asking because that is what the planning board requires of me. The pattern of misinformation as well as the disregard for my associates on numerous requests of your legal, engineering, and highway departments has reached a point where it's obvious that I might have to avail myself of relief from appropriate jurisdiction to accomplish your planning's requirements. I will then spend significant money on legal representation, as will Red Hook, for no real purpose. In my 25 years of land development, I have been here before and I know how this plays out. In the alternative, I would offer that the Red Hook Town Board have the opportunity to stave off this expense and rather designate a board member liaison without prejudice to work directly with me to ensure that we don't go down the path of needless litigation, at the, that I receive the timely responses that any taxpayer is due, notwithstanding the fact that I am now and have been for years reimbursing Red Hook for all of its legal, engineering, and consulting expenses in this regard. Now, I have all my contact information here for you, and I have one of these for each one of you, so, and that's simply my statement. And I, as far as response goes, it's, it's, it's up to you. I'm, I don't expect a response. I basically here, came here to make a statement, but I'm open for questioning. Well, so. thank you, Mark. And uh, as I stated to you earlier, you're welcome to call my office. I, and so meeting. we'll... We, I'd be happy to have a discussion. That's fine. Yeah. So if I can approach. Yes, please do. I pretty soon most of the information that I'd be interested in is in the letter. Yeah, it's for basically it's what I talked about. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. Thank Mark, you very much. Mark, Mark, watch out Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Watch your watch card. Watch the footboard. I watched the, the card. Oh, God. I, you know, and I saw you do that. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very, very much, much, Mark. Thank you. Good Safe evening. travels. Um, Linda, would you like to go next? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Keeling, Pitcher Lane, Red Hook. Uh, I've been here before regarding the uh, zoning uh, committee. Zoning um, <laughs> ZRC. Okay, and the town calendar indicates that June 9th of 2016, the meeting was canceled. July 2016, there were min minutes posted. However, since that time, there are no minutes for the following days August 11th, 2016, September 15th, October 13th, December 8th. So that's five for the year 2016. In 2017, January 12th, February 9th, and March 9th, that's three. So a total of eight months of minutes are missing. I'm Susan sorry, Simon is you, the which, chairman. This is the ZRC you're talking yes. about now? Yes. Okay. This is a dereliction of duty, and okay. I think she should be replaced. Okay. Okay, uh, 
like sorry, you have something to say or no, 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 no. Okay. My second thing is I attended the intermunicipal task force on Friday the twenty fourth. Uh, just I came a little bit before eight o'clock so I wouldn't miss the meeting as it started at eight. I went to the front door and it was locked. I banged, 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 and no one came to open the door. So I had to eventually, and I did use the, the button for the access, the door wouldn't open. There was no bell to indicate that somebody was at the front door. So I had to go and use the back door, which is only for employees. I just happened to be an employee, but if somebody else came and they saw the sign that says for employees only, they would say, I can't use that entrance. So that door has to be open. That's the front door. When you have that locked, you are discriminating against the disabled. I will not have that. Okay, I'd be happy to respond to that. Okay. Okay, you came last Friday for the very first time. You arrived at the door at moments before 8 o'clock. The door was opened up at 8.01. After I please, said to Please you. let me finish. I let you talk. Please let me talk. All right, go ahead. Okay. That door has been open at 8 o'clock or 8.01 every week for the last several weeks. Okay? There has been a sign out front prior to that for weeks Who's saying, please use the side door. The sign wasn't out there for the last several weeks because we have been unlocking the door. We do so even knowing that people could be walking in the building unattended, unescorted, that we cannot help in order to accommodate your request that we keep it unlocked. Okay, so we are doing what you ask. I will remind you, we have advisory committees that meet at all hours and also at different locations. For example, we have an, a, an economic development committee that meets Wednesday mornings at 8.30, I believe it is. Is that right, Harry? That's right. 8.30. They meet in Village Hall. Why? Because it's convenient for them. Many are shop owners. They're donating their time like you have many times. And so we're trying to make it convenient because volunteerism is something we'd like to hold on to. They're advisory in nature. They're doing what they can to pitch in and to then come back to us as the town board. And then we take it through a very lengthy legal process. And as you yourself have acknowledged, we are trying to do everything we can to bring government, make it easier for folks bring it to their homes. So I'm okay with the criticism, but the criticism needs to be uh, accompanied with facts. And I just would say the next time, was the please, door was not open. it was not open before 8 o'clock. It was open at 8 or 8.01. And after I said to you, the door no, is not open. No, I'm sorry, you're wrong. The door was already open and it I pointed that open. out. Okay, any other comments, Linda? Um, yes, okay. when you have a committee meeting, and you have three board members there. That's considered a town board meeting. It's illegal to do that. You shouldn't have more than two people. We, we notice every meeting, every IMTF meeting, depending upon how many town board members sit in and participate, um, there are only two members of the task force right now that are also town board members. You invited a third, and that person declined. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any other public comments? Uh, hearing none, let's move on to the next item on the agenda, if we could. Um, we are uh, finally, hopefully, going to adopt our hazard mitigation plan. We've been asked the county to um, update some information we have draft that's been circulated to you for several weeks now for any additional comments. If you have any, please uh, feel free to make them at this time. <coughs> any questions? And so folks at home know this is a uh, responsibility we have if we would like to get reimbursed in the case of events that might occur in our township. We have identified actions. Any 
questions? Comments? Okay, hearing none, is there a motion to approve the resolution to adopt the hazard mitigation plan? So moved. Second. All right. Any further discussion? If not, the only comment I can make yes, sir. is I was reading this today. Yes, sir. And I remember I remember these things and their the frequency is is a little bit mind boggling to me of the the storms and the situations we've had in the few years I've been on the town board. I don't know how the history plays back in the past, but you know, local, local weather is is uh, uh, has our attention. I think uh, most folks would chalk that up to climate change, Harry. Yeah, I suspect you're right. Yeah. Um, okay. Did we vote on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. All right. Um, Item number two is a resolution. It's not really a resolution. We need a motion to appropriate Parkland funds. Unfortunately, we've had another incident of vandalism in our uh, rec parks, and we need to uh, swap out a door. The rec commission would like approval to use the funds from the Parkland funds um, line. That's 714200 the amount of 939 13 I would move that we approve that request. Okay. Harry, Bill, Jim. Do we, do we have a motion and a second? I, uh, I, I moved it. Okay. Uh, I'll second. second. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. We have to spend money yeah. because of That's what I was going to say. Change the door now so to so go both ways. And then, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I do think we should give some thought to um, the possibility of having a couple of cameras in the park. And, and I say that very carefully so that people who are concerned about privacy, um, I share that sensitivity. But you know, a lot of security cameras and the tape that goes along with it, digital or otherwise, they're not really referenced, they're not utilized unless something happens. We could have a system where we had some uh, security cameras there and, um, you know, we wouldn't refer to any of that unless we had an incident like this. And that's something I throw out there, not necessarily suggesting, but something that we should at least think about and um, there's, solicit there's some input from the community. There's been significant history, and it, I think that's, I agree, it's worth, worth considering. Um, We're, yeah. we, we've increasingly are spending, speaking of frequency, um, money on correcting vandalism in our rhetoric facilities. So. I, w I would look for some some input from you all and, and also from, from the folks at home whether or not you think that would be something we should consider. Okay, uh, item number three is an update on our street light audit and purchase. Um, as you know, we approved um, hiring a firm to audit our street lights, um, both for billing and for in inventory. Um, they've been in our township. They're preparing uh, the results. They have noticed some discrepancies. Um, we should get a report from them in the next uh, few weeks. Um, meanwhile, um, the Mid-Hudson Streetlight Consortium moves forward with its um, guidance on how um, to consider uh, the purchase of the streetlights. And they have some very good materials I've shared with you. Um, I also will tell you that this uh, grant that they have from NYSERDA allows them to, um, they have a consultant who's done this in hundreds of communities throughout the country. And he will be um, holding our hand through this process as we, um, go forward what looks like purchasing our streetlights from Central Hudson. 
and we had a meeting here today with a representative from C Central Hudson on other issues, but they did update us as to um, the, the rates, the rental rates, and it's it's still looking like it it only makes sense for the taxpayers that we acquire the lights ourselves, that we control and design the lighting um, to suit the needs of the community. <coughs> and the, the payback period still looks to be somewhere around three years, which is really um, phenomenal. So just uh, more materials for you to take a look at, and we'll have hopefully something late April or May more concrete on this. All right, item number four is really something um, for the public. We've mentioned at a previous meeting, but we would like to bring to your attention because it's a kind of an important issue for us as a town board. We were approached some time ago, a couple of months ago, by the Red Church Cemetery Corporation. Steve, are you able to capture that image? If you are not familiar with the Red Church or the cemetery that adjoins it, it's on Route 9G, just north of the entrance to the village of Tivoli. The officers of the corporation approached us and essentially said that due to a lack of volunteerism, the exhaustion on the part of the folks who have been maintaining it, that they are going to endeavor to abandon the cemetery, in which case we are required by state law to take it over and to perform at least minimal duties regarding maintenance and upkeep. Now the Red Church is, as you can see, um, it's uh, recently been rehabbed with uh, grant funding from New York State. And it's a wonderful property. It's at the gateway. It deserves to have the kind of care that it's been um, getting. And we as a town board have been researching and taking classes on what it means to own a cemetery and looking into the legal aspects of it. And we want to make sure before we go ahead and make a decision on whether or not we should pursue that, we are forced to take it over if it's abandoned and nobody else takes it over. Um, whether or not we can try to find some other entity that would be able to do that. Um, what I would say to the folks at home is if you find it to be an asset, something you'd like to volunteer for, to help upkeep. It's a beautiful church inside, by the way. It's very uh, sort of primitive, but it's, it's, it's quite lovely. And um, the property, the views of the mountains, it's really a, an asset for the community. So tonight, it's really to bring attention for the folks at home, if you have any interest in joining a committee and trying to um, help the cemetery corporation that exists now and to help the town uh, try to figure out a way in which um, it can continue to be maintain as well as it is now, um, we would appreciate hearing from you. So you can reach out to my office or send a letter of interest to uh, Sue McCann. And um, I don't know, Chris, did you want to say anything from a legal standpoint? Did you anything to share tonight? With the board or well, I think you've covered the, the main future. points actually already. Okay. Um, you know, we have this existing uh, private cemetery corporation that was created many, many years ago that's been operating. Um, and as, as Robert indicated, um, they have fairly minimal resources. They do have resources, but they're fairly minimal. Um, and uh, you know, there's not a lot of 
burials that happen in that cemetery, and so there's not a lot of revenue coming in, and, and it's fairly old. So, but there are still, you know, it's still an active cemetery. It's not, you know, it's not abandoned. There's still a lot of um, um, area where, uh, you know, it can continue to operate if the community wants to have it continue to operate. So, um, the current uh, two operators have been doing it for many, many years, and they're um, they're volunteers, and they're. Uh, they need to step down, so uh, that's the situation with that. Am I am I correct that um, the the basic two just so the public knows the basic two options of the town does end up having to take it over? The town could still have a committee that operated it as a c active cemetery, or we could just maintain it as it is without any new burial. Like, aren't those sort of like the two? I know no, I mean, if it ends up getting abandoned, I mean, it could just be, you know, essentially mowed and... Right, we'd just you know, kind of mow it and maintain right. it, but not, mm -hmm. no new burials, right. no... Well, right. I suppose if you've already purchased a plot, then maybe you are entitled, right. You're but entitled other to than use that. that plot, right. Okay. Right. There are quite a number of plots that are owned by families now. Yeah. Well, we, um, we, as always, want to do the right thing and we would look for um, both your opinion and your assistance if, uh, if we do in fact take it over and if there is someone interested in being on the committee we'd, we'd love to hear from you. All right, any, anything else on that uh, agenda item? Okay. So the next thing is uh, for discussion is number five. Um, we've been talking for uh, several meetings now. Um, we were successful with our clean energy community designation. We were only the fourth township in New York State to be designated the clean energy community. And as you know, uh, the energy committee has been meeting to discuss um, what we might put that hundred thousand dollars towards, what type of projects or actions that we might take. It's too soon uh, for the committee to come in front of you uh, to make a presentation, but I just wanted to get, throw out a few ideas that um, have been contemplated and um, for, your, uh, for your use also um, some perhaps estimates, but we're looking at a couple of things. One is to try and make our municipal campus and our um, buildings net zero. What does that mean? That we would like to um, populate our demand, respond to our demand with clean energy uh, sources. So we're looking at several actions. One is to put photovoltaics on the highway garage. It was, in fact, built several years ago with the intent of having a PV system on it. Um, we are looking at what those options are. It's a very large roof. It can accommodate quite a bit. It could supply as much energy as we have demand for um, with our municipal buildings. We just need to um, get more verification from Central Hudson um, whom we met with today about what the upgrade cost to um, the poles or the wiring would be um, for various sizes. We are also looking at, uh, perhaps long overdue, is this very inefficient building that we have with um, rather poor insulation, in particular in the roof. And if you're not familiar with the uh, town hall, town hall is actually two buildings. There was an addition put on um, some 15 years ago towards the rear of the building here. This original structure uh, dates back to the 1980s. So we are looking at uh, properly insulating the ceiling and trying to reduce our fossil fuel usage as well as replacing our air source heat pumps and our equipment, just so you know, our equipment dates back, it's over 30 years old, since the 80s, since this original structure was built. 
And so we've had vendors come in and give us in estimates. Obviously, we would have to go out to bid for everything that's being contemplated. But when we go to apply for the grant, we want to have some idea of what, um, what those numbers might be. The other thing we're looking at is, as you know, we're getting um, EV charging stations here in uh, Town Hall. We're also looking at what would the impact be for our residents if in some way we can use that state money, because it's really $100,000 passed down from the state, to further incentivize our residents to go EV. And the reason we're also looking at that is because, and I, I included a chart from Paul, who's our physics professor um, and energy committee member, and he quantifies in the chart um, the CO2 reduction that would take place in an average family here in Red Hook by taking certain actions. And what you can see from this chart, if you have it handy, is that switching a vehicle that gets 20 miles per gallon, for, for example, to an electric vehicle makes an enormous difference in a reduction in CO2. It reduces a family's, or household rather, footprint by 32%. And again, this, these are averages of each. Each situation is um, obviously different. So we're looking at whether or not, because the prices of the electric cars now are very competitive with non-electric vehicles when you take into account um, the federal inv investment tax credits and the recently announced, in fact, just uh, a week or 10 days ago, the state has a rebate program now. You can look up Drive Clean New York, and you can see the kinds of rebates that are offered on the various models of vehicles. So we are um, taking a look at those items. I don't know that we have much <coughs> for the folks at home to look at tonight. So those are a couple of things that we're taking a look at. And Again, we would like your input, town board members, and also the public. Um, it's our expectation the Energy Committee is going to make a proposal to you on several actions, and that um, the cost of those actions will likely exceed the $100,000. But because of the 100000 and the payback and the energy cost savings, we hope to have something that's really um, kind of persuasive, uh, both from a fiscal standpoint and certainly from um, a, an impact standpoint, environmental impact, which is obviously um, a criteria of the grant application it's, itself. So that's May 1st, as a reminder, is the deadline for the grant. So look for this um, at one of our two April meetings for more discussion and decision. It'd be great if the Energy Committee could come in person to talk about they it. They will. Good. Yeah. It'll, we'll have a nice, um, nice PowerPoint presentation on things. Have we, um, two thoughts, have we considered the, I know there was one other idea that I heard about, I don't know if the Energy Committee had a chance to think about the idea of somehow making the doorway more efficient, that, that area where we now have an ADA compliant door, but it, you know, because of, it's, you know, it's supposed to be slow to open and close to help people get through, but then there's a lot of air um, exchange that's going to end up making things kind of inefficient, no, almost no matter what season you're in, you know, air conditioning or heat wise, and I know there was an idea from I talked to Ted about it. But the, the clerk's office about, you know, well, is, I, is I, there something we can do to address that? Yeah, well, I'm, the only thing I can see that makes any sense would be to create a vestibule in the front hallway so that you would come through the door that is opened electrically, then, and then you could have a swinging door level to the floor and two of them on the inside. So you'd come into a, a vestibule that would, and you could easily 
come either this way or the other way, and it would, it would, that's likely to have a major impact on on the flow of cold air and the, and on the loss of air conditioning conditioned air. And I, I don't think it would be particularly expensive. Well, we do have a contractor coming because one of the one of the things we're looking at is if we change the insulation on the envelope on the walls, um, might we consider changing the siding at the same time? Because I don't know if you've noticed the, despite it being vinyl, we're starting to have issues with it, perforations and another. Um, so. That is one of the questions we were going to ask. Um, Harry, I think though we may run into some space issues. Uh, again, ADA compliance there. We need to make sure whatever vestibule that is, that a uh, wheelchair can get in and around that area. Well, I think so my guess is there's substantial space there. And, and, you know, there would, there would be at least 10 feet. There may be more like 15 feet. Of okay. space between the doors. And yeah, you just have to take into account that yeah. the nights when you have court, you have the. Um, yeah. That, that, you know, that that, I think that could be, be worked into, into it. Yeah. The, uh, the magnetometer. Mm -hmm. Right, and the deputy that needs to sit there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, so I just bring it up because I yeah. know our timeline is pretty short on this, but as we're thinking about sort of building wide improvements, if it was part of a larger. It is, improvement yeah. project, then I, I, it sounded like a good project to have on the list of, of things we're going to need to address sooner or later. And if we're talking about energy efficiency, it seemed to fit right in with, with that theme. I don't think that would be expensive in terms of you know, two, two swinging doors inside. Okay. Anything else on that? Very good. So let's move on to item number six. It's a proclamation we've done uh, now for the last several years. Worldwide Parkinson's Disease Awareness Month. Jim. Could I borrow your lungs this evening and ask you to read the uh, proclamation if you would be so kind? Certainly, Robert. <clears throat> Whereas Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurological movement disorder of the central nervous system, which has a unique impact on each patient. And whereas, according to the Parkinson's Action Network, the Parkinson's Disease Foundation the American Parkinson's Disease Association and the National Institutes of Health. There are over one million Americans diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and where <coughs> symptoms include slowness, tremor, difficulty with balance and speaking, rigidity, cognitive and memory problems, and whereas although new medicines and therapies may enhance life for some time for people with Parkinson's, <coughs> more work is needed for a cure. And whereas Increased education and research are needed to help find more effective treatments with fewer side effects and ultimately a cure for Parkinson's disease. And whereas a multidisciplinary approach to Parkinson's disease care includes local wellness support and caregiver groups. And whereas April has been proclaimed as Worldwide Parkinson's Awareness Month for all to recognize the need for more research and help in dealing with the devastating effects of Parkinson's disease. Now, therefore, we, um, the, the supervisor and town board of the <coughs> town of Red Hook, do hereby proclaim April as Parkinson's Awareness Month in 19, in 2017. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, I will second your motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, number seven is just simply there's a letter, uh, we'll uh, look to at a later date, get some input from you, Duchess Land Conservancy uh, writes to us regarding a trailer on a farm vis-a-vis uh, -vis having um, having that trailer sit 
not an existing condition, but the trailer is being replaced, and apparently building code requires that, so they'll be looking for some input from us on that, and I will be looking for some feedback from you on that issue. I read this at some length, and it's, it, it seems to make sense that the, he, he has to keep his employees housed appropriately. The trailer he has is Six foot longer than the, the the new trailer will be six foot longer than the old one. It'll be in the same place, but it will be on a pad instead of on on the ground. I guess the concrete pad. So the, the difference, the change would be the concrete pad and six feet longer. And the DLC it is quite comfortable with it. Well, and it's still. I mean, the, as far as the conservation easement is concerned, it's still well within the, um, you know, like the impervious surface area that's allowed with yes. the easement. So, I yeah. mean, as far as whether you know, we were concerned about that, it seemed like, you know, the Land Conservancy was fine with it and seemed to indicate they'd be willing to, I think they said it's a, an approval via the easement's discretionary consent clause. So, I think we're just supposed to tell them if we have any comments or concerns, right? Right. But so it's really up to them to kind of make that final determination. That's exactly right. right. Okay. Certainly makes sense of bringing more in compliance with the existing yeah. building uh, codes and requirements today as well. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, do con contemplate it some more, and if you get back to me, I'd appreciate it. Number eight on the item, uh, the agenda items, is uh, again just for discussion. Um, we have our annual agreement for expenditure of highway monies, and our highway department is asking for us to approve $50,000 to be set aside for general repairs, and asking for permanent improvements of $140,000, that's paving, on Mill Road, that's commencing at Rockefeller Lane and leading to State Route 9 a distance of 5,900 feet. And then the other thing that we'd like to get some input from the public and certainly the people who live around the area is um, B, Oriole Mills Road, commencing at Yance Road and leading to Oriole Mills, a distance of 5,450 feet um, paving, and that's for a sum of 85,000 a portion of which, and Teresa, correct me if I'm Well, I'll, I'll give you a little history yeah, that's and fine. some information on this. Sure, a portion of which is not yet paid. So, Oriole Mills Thank Road you. is um, one and a half miles long, and it's 20 to 21 feet wide. And it runs from Yance Road to Old Rock City Road. Uh, about halfway through, there's 2,000 feet of gravel. Um, it was supposed to be paved in 2008, but that year the price of blacktop skyrocketed. It was put on the back burner. Um, this past bidding um, period, we got an extremely low price for binder, which we need four inches of in that one section. And we wanted to connect the two asphalt ends and take away the gravel portion. Um, the gravel portion causes us extra maintenance. Uh, I believe there are unsafe travel conditions. I had asked the supervisor to go out a month ago when we had some really deep mud. If you didn't have a four-wheel drive vehicle that day, you probably wouldn't be able to get through safely. And that happens in the spring <coughs> when there's a thaw and we almost closed the road. But Conditions were all right for a couple of days, and we didn't get any complaints, so we kept it open. Um, in the winter, that one section is always icy. You can't plow a gravel road the way you plow a blacktop road. You can't take the snow off completely. You can't put enough salt on to take the ice away without causing um, worse conditions. So you're traveling on the asphalt, which is clear, and then you come to the ice, and then you go back onto asphalt again. 
what we have to do often is take a separate truck out there because sometimes it's so soft, the big trucks can't plow it. Take a smaller truck, plow it, come back, unload the salt and sand, load it up with sand, and bring it out, all for 2,000 feet. The town of Red Hook does not have a network of gravel roads. It has that one portion and two little dead-end roads. Um, so it does cause us extra maintenance year after year. We had 23 storms this season, so 23 times we had to go out with a separate truck to address that little portion of road. Um, there's uh, an inconsistency in the road surface changes when you're traveling on the road. And I've had signs installed that says pavement ends, but sometimes you don't even notice that all of a sudden you're on gravel and you're starting to slide. Um, it's 35 miles an hour in that section. It's 25 miles an hour in the section that goes through the camp, but the section that goes through the camp, rising sun, um, is not gravel, it's asphalt. And um, what we'd like to do is just make this one road consistent because we believe that it will be better for maintenance and better for safety. Um, the road itself already has several built-in design features to slow traffic down. Um, it's very windy, it's narrow, it's hilly, and there are lots of trees really close to the road. So for me, um, having that little piece of gravel as an extra safety measure to slow traffic down doesn't really make a lot of sense. So um, I would like to see it paved. We do have the funding to do that this year, and um, you have the agreement in front of you. Does anybody have any questions? And, and the, we have the grader primarily for, the, for is used on that road, right? We have to go out in the summertime when it washboards. Yeah. And if you don't get it at the right time, you can't grade it. It has to be at a certain time in the spring. Do we use that grader for anything else? Not much. We do um, cuffing and ditching, and we grade the, like the water tower and it's the a um, caterpillar, uh, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's yeah. an eight. I don't know how old it is. It's ancient. It looks. It still looks, works. Looks good to me. <laughs> you know, it doesn't get out of the yard that much. Yeah. Um, if we didn't have the grader, we'd have to rent it for that particular piece of road. But would we need the grader? Is there any use for the grader if we don't have that road? Um, I'm not sure. I would have to talk to uh, Rob, mm -hmm. the um, heavy equipment operator, and see exactly what else he does with it. I know cuffing and ditching along the sides of the roads, and we even used it to scrape some of the ice off the roads during this last storm. Really? Yeah, because it, it did a good job with that, mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't do a lot mm -hmm. for our department. Mm -hmm. My only question is the, the estimate for that is you know quite a bit less than for mill road. Is that because of the difference in the width primarily? It's because we can do the work ourselves, and mill road is a um, is a two course treatment. One is a fiber mat, fiber which mat. is the thin layer with the fibers in it, and the other is a very thin la layer of um, uh, hot mix asphalt overlay, and that's a contracted price. That's an estimate that we got last year. And um, the other estimate is the work that we can do ourselves. So the binder for four inches would go uh, 2,000 feet, and then we would top the 50, 450, or whatever that figure is with one and a half inches. So yeah, it would make it consistent all the way you're up to. You top that yourself too, rather than sub that up. Yeah, either either with our um, paver or it's getting a little old. We can always um, get a paver off of the county contract and have an operator come in. But we would have the trucks and we would have the handwork and we could do the rolling ourselves. We're the the guys are pretty good with with the paving equipment. We've done a lot of smaller roads ourselves, saving some money. So the 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 price we got for blacktop this year is phenomenal. Yeah, I remember that when we looked it's, at those a while ago. It seemed very recent. And, and we would like to take advantage of that where we can. If we, Makes um, sense. If we wait for one meeting's worth, just in case anybody from the public has an opinion about one of these projects or something, I think that was a concern. It, will that put you off your schedule? Like, do no, we need if, to if we can get this um, approved at the next meeting, then that would be fine, but I hesitate to wait because once the weather turns nice, we could have an earlier opportunity. Yeah. You know, and I, and I hope that I've addressed most of the concerns that people may have, and if not, they're welcome to call my office and let me know. So, 
Yeah, I think at, at a minimum, you know, we we uh, mail to um, the folks on uh, Rockefeller and Pitcher to let them know about the postings of the new speed limits and what our intention was to try and get them legally lowered through the state to let them have an opportunity to uh, be apprised of the situation. So at a minimum, what I'd like to do, you had mentioned you would you know, need it certainly an answer from us by June, but... No, I, 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 what I meant to say was I could start the project, project in by June. June. Okay. I need an answer in the next month. Okay. The next two town board meetings. Yeah. I don't think that it's necessary with Panda and other means of communication that you have to mail letters to the people who live there because the gravel portion runs through two pieces of property. Right. If you're talking about everybody on the road and getting a letter together and doing a mailing, I think it's going to put you back significantly in time. Right. And, and it's, it's something that we've never done before. So, I mean, that's up to you. Yes, I'd like to do I respect your opinion, I, but I, I, if I'd you like can to. get that done and have an answer we can. by the end of April, then... Yeah, we can do that, and I, I very much would like to do that. I think uh, paving a dirt road, uh, that's a historic change in the character of the road, and I think the people around there should be apprised of what's being considered. It's a, it essentially is not necessarily a permanent, but so it certainly is a long So going to draft road. that letter? I'll, I'd be happy to take care of that, to, to let them know essentially what's being contemplated, um, well, I would like to also review the letter before it goes out, please. Sure, sure. Um, anything else? Okay. Thank you very much, please. All right. Um, I thought we would skip to, um, while Teresa's still here, maybe we could skip from 8 to 10 if we could give you a brief synopsis Where are we? A brief synopsis of, as you know um, there was a grant from DEC to study culverts in our community uh, for a replacement to increase connectivity um, the engineers worked with our highway department, our highway super and crew, and uh, the estuary program to come up with priority lists for the culverts. Um, a lot of back and forth. What would work well for us as far as replacement and what would work well for um, the goals of the grant. Um, aren't necessarily aligned in all of the, how many 60 some odd culverts we had that were analyzed? I don't have the figures. I think it was approximately. Robert, I didn't know you were going to have this. Um, yeah. So there were about 60 some odd um, culverts that uh, were analyzed. And I think from the town's perspective, we had um, a list of priorities. And uh, DEC had perhaps different priorities, and we were trying to find where the, the crossover was. And so apparently we have three culverts in the township that are rated as severe, which would garner the attention of the estuary program, which has a million dollars towards a replacement. And I should add that the priority for that for those funds are dams and then um, culverts that are rated severe. There were three of them that they analyzed. You have a memo from our engineers about the three. Two of them are on Fraley Lane. One of them is on Fellow Newmark Road. You have estimates for the replacement costs. And the opinion really that you have in the memo is from our engineers taking a look at 
what the existing condition is with respect to each one of the three culverts and what the recommendation is. For example, one of the culverts is a tiny little cul culvert handling a very small amount of water. And that is, I think, DC 42. Sorry, DC 46, let's look at that one first. That's 1 1.2 on page two. And that's the uh, second Fraley Lane culvert. It's a very small 15 inch round culvert. <clears throat> it has some deficiencies as far as, <coughs> excuse me, aquatic passability, but they are proposing in order to meet the standard under the grant that what is essentially a foot and a half wide culvert would then need to be replaced with 11 and a half feet wide by 34 inch high aluminum box culvert. And that's estimated at a cost of $56,000. Um, I should note that the grant allows for 95% to be paid by the state. And our engineers have determined that this action would not be recommended because there's very little activity at that location. And then the other one on Fraley Lane, they think we should consider that's DC 42, and that's a double culvert, side by side, which unfortunately I think we just replaced a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yeah. Didn't match up very well with our schedule. Um, there's a budget there for, for that as well. And then the third one is a large one on Feller Newmark Road. That is a very old steel culvert. I know this one well. And that um, that the proposed replacement structure would be a 10 foot wide by 42 inch high multi-plate single radius steel arc. That one has a significant drop off, I think, from the north to the south. So that would be a project. And if I'm not mistaken, Teresa, we would subcontract both of these if we were to conduct the replacement. We would not do the work ourselves, right? No. And no, either we, one uh, of those. We did a review of the culvert installation, and it's not something that our department is um, um, experienced in. And uh, most of these culvert replacements are for the aquatic barriers, not necessarily for the replacement program that the town has in place. So we were trying to match up, and it's really difficult to do that because the um, DEC has priorities that may not uh, align with our priorities. Right. So, you know, it's, it's complicated. They're trying to put stuff in for the, for the aquatic things, and maybe causing different issues. On the other hand, I noticed, um, like with the Fraley Lane uh, proposal here, 1-1, one, one, DC 42, I think is the, the coding. That's a side-by-side, -side, and they no longer want us to do side-by-sides. Is that correct? Correct. OK. So even though we did replace it a few years ago, we could replace that one and, and do a larger single it's also better for flood control, not just for the 
creatures. <laughs> Bless you. Well, we were just inlining on the engineer's um, recommendations for this study no. because we're not really uh, familiar with all of the details that they're looking for. Right. This is this was considered by them and by the experts to, to change, make changes elsewhere. And, but, but after they got their heads together, they came up with these, these two locations, right? These seem to be the, the, the priorities for the DEC. Mm -hmm. And since they're the ones giving the grant money, yeah. you're pretty much looking at, you know, these may have a chance, but they're so small. <coughs> if they're looking at dams, that uh, right. these are just going to be under the radar, I think. Yeah, we might not have a great shot at these. Although they are rated severe. Um, severe you know for aquatic passability. Yes. Not severe for water moving or for um, condition. Right. But, but for their criteria, though. For their criteria. It, it'll, they'll rate high as far as culverts. They just won't compete well with dams. If somebody's ready to remove a dam, which is can be very expensive, hundreds of thousands of dollars to remove a dam, uh, depending upon the particulars. There's a million dollars for all the applications, but we don't know, and I should say that there's only a, a certain area in the Hudson Valley um, where applications are being entertained right now. So it's, it's not the whole state, but um, it's something that I think we need to consider more. Unfortunately, we have an April 6th deadline. Well, this is the, you know, I, this came in late today, so I haven't really been able to go through it. Yeah. Um, we've been working on it, but we've been waiting for a response from the DEC, and I didn't realize that they had responded with this. So um, we can take a look at it again. Yeah. But uh, it seems that each one of the ones that they've um, recommended has difficulties. So... I mean, what are you looking for? How many are you looking to do? Well, I think really to review the options here and to review the numbers. I mean, if I just move a thumb here, one one that they are recommending is forty-one thousand dollars, ninety-five percent reimbursement. The other one is um, thirty-nine thousand, so roughly eighty-two thousand. Uh, Five percent of that would be about. A little over four thousand that we would pay for to replace these two culverts. So I guess we would look for you to give us some advice on whether that would be good value because ultimately someday we are going to have to replace some of those culverts, um, whether they're because they've rotted out or because they're improperly sized. I don't know, but we look to get some guidance from you whether you thought that was good for us to spend only four thousand dollars right now and get those two replaced or not well as i said i have to so we'll look need more time so it sounds like to me we're going to have to call a special meeting for next week just to make a decision on this grant application if we'd like to go forward or not so i would ask you all if you would take some some time over the next uh well, by midweek, if we could, please, maybe Wednesday of next week or so, come to some consensus on whether or not we'd like to apply for this program. Does that make sense? One of, the meetings, yeah. one of the meetings I attended, they were clearly very, the experts, and I'm not an expert, um, they were quite concerned about the one with the 48 inch, a four foot drop, it was it seemed to be most at risk. And, and be the most the most needing change in the context of the flora and fauna. Uh, well, it's the most difficult one to fix, yeah. if it can be fixed. Oh, no, that's it. Yeah. And part of it is, you know, you get the grant money and you get into a difficult situation and you have to finish what you started. Well, is that going to incur more costs on the part of the town? So I would say if you're going to go for anything in this, go for the sure thing something that you know can be done easily by a contractor um, just for practicality purposes. It seems to me that their proposed replacement 
uh, comments here would suggest that they they have truly estimated it, what it would what it would cost, and that have and they're indicating it's doable. Uh, I'm, I don't know that that. Do you read that that way? Which, uh, like I said, Harry, I'm just glancing over this yeah. right now. Okay. Yeah. So. Why don't Why don't we uh, table this till next week? I'll call a special meeting when we feel like we've had an opportunity to review the documents and to discuss it again next week and see if we're going to move forward to make an application. Is the engineering firm doing the actual application? Um, they, they would, yes. We're, we're not in a position to do that. So, yeah, I mean, Wednesday would probably be pressing. And Crawford did these evaluations. These there was a grant for a study for yes. the culverts. Yeah. And the information that they came up with in the study um, was extensive. And we mm -hmm. sat down with them and discussed our top ten. Mm -hmm. um, but the DEC uh, has made it very clear that they have preferred projects mm -hmm. that they would like to see done. And I think these are the preferred projects yeah. they would like to see done. I saw their notes of some of the things they didn't like that we had proposed initially. It's because of the connectivity for the aquatic. Yeah. Right. You know, it, we may have had more severe um, culvert issues, rotting and things like that, but mm -hmm. they want to know if they're going to give us the money, is it going to be for the purpose that it's intended? Are these animals going to be able to get through? Will it work in a 500-year storm? So. Okay. That's what we've been discussing. Um, so if there's, an, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say if you if you review it and you have a recommendation, maybe you could send it to all of us. Yeah. So we'll know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We were we were still last time I talked to the um, engineers, they were still in contact with DDC, and uh, like I said, I haven't seen this until tonight. Yeah, it's so. fresh off the press, as they say, this afternoon. So. Okay, very good. Um, can we go back to reorganization now? We have been wanting to fill a vacancy on the assessment review board with the resignation of Lois Chenkis. And if we haven't thanked her before, I would like to thank her for 30 years of service on the Assessment Review Board. Um, but she did finally say it was time to move on to other pastures. So we, uh, we need to fill that vacancy. There is a training session that comes up offered by the county the first week of May. And so... went out soliciting and um, you received that letter about a month ago from or so from Bill Hamill who was interested in joining the assessment review board and then just last week, I think Pete Hubble was speaking to Claire Horst and said, oh, and Claire mentioned that there was a vacancy. And so Pete said, oh, he would be interested in two. So um, I had a discussion with Bill Hamill, see if he'd be interested in joining, because we're going to have a vacancy pretty soon on the planning board with the election of Charlie Lang to the village board. And would he be interested in that, perhaps, because we had someone else who was also now interested in the assessment review board. And you have both of their resumes. And I wouldn't um, want to appoint Bill Hamill 
to the planning board, but perhaps as an alternate or something, if we were willing to start him off that way, get his feet wet, give him time to get his training. But I'm looking at to solicit your input on what what you think we should do. Well, I'm familiar with Pete Hubble. Obviously, he's been involved in town for a long time, Robert. Yeah. Um, William Hamill, I, I don't know. Do you know him? I do. I do, actually, and that's why I thought he would be, you know, I, he's retiring from his job working for the state, and you see his, uh, his background. I mean, right now he's working for the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance, right? So um, he's the director for the Office of Internal Affairs. He's high up there, um, but he is retiring. In the well, next, I, I know him. In the I next few him. weeks. And yeah. um, so, you know, if you're out there and you're about to retire, please don't bump into me in town because, and, and tell me that because I will um, try to convince you to volunteer for one of these boards or committees. And so um, he was actually very eager to do so. Um, it's quite a professional history. Yeah, I mean, why is he interested in assessment review? Well, that's what we had. So I said, are you interested in that? And he, he uh, did some research. He spoke to uh, the State Department, um, you know, wanted to make sure how they felt, even though he's, you know, retiring in the next few weeks and complex. I mean, he's just a real professional. Um, and, um, you know, I said we had this, this void and, you know, could you do some research and see if that's something you might be interested in? And then Pete, who has extensive real estate experience, obviously, owning a real estate appraisal firm, and, and we should note for the record that Pete's firm does not do work in the town of Red Hook. And um, um, he has sold his firm. Um, but he has indicated that his firm will, will continue not to do work in the town of Red Hook because obviously we don't want any conflict or appearance of conflict. So, I know both of them be hard pressed to, to uh, Pete's been here for many years, hasn't he? In town? Oh, Pete's been here. Wow. I don't want to say how long I have Pete's no been here. I mean, the one thing I would say is obviously his experience is, you know, perhaps a little bit more directly tied to that spot than Bill Hamill's would, would obviously be. Well, um, it's certainly directly uh, related to appraisal as experience. Where right. Bill, Bill has, uh, I know, done a great deal of analysis on, of uh, rather sensitive kind of government issues. I'll put it that one. He says he has an interest in the, in the planning board as well, so I don't know. I, yeah. that, that to me was the only, I thought, mm -hmm. maybe good solution, considering we have two people now when we were waiting several months to have any applications. Any thoughts on that? Uh, appointing Bill to, I'm sorry, P2 Assessment Review Board and Bill as an alternate to Planning Board? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Scott, hmm? no, I don't have any objection. Mm -hmm. Sarah? Yeah, I don't feel like I have an opinion either way, other than Pete does seem to have the more direct experience. So. Mm -hmm. I think I, I think I feel okay having Kate do assessment review. I share your concern <coughs> about losing a willing volunteer, so let's make sure we find a spot for William. Mm -hmm. Somewhere else. Would Pete continue to serve on the Ag and Open Space? I think you know I've sort of indicated to them I, I would, I would love it if we could have a, a new chair of that committee. I think there were co-chairs because there really wasn't a chair for that committee. Norma stepped down as the <coughs> chair. 
Um, I think it might be appropriate for, I know they are discussing with some of their other members if there is somebody, because uh, Pete does not farm himself, mm -hmm. and it would be great if we could have maybe a farmer even, or a young farmer, or a new farmer, or somebody who's doing things slightly differently, um, chairing that committee. Anyway, shall we proceed with that split plan? It's all right with me. Okay. All right. I would like to make a motion that we appoint Pete Hubble to the Assessment Review Board. And I'll combine it and appoint William Hamill as an alternate to the Planning Board. I do that as one of two separate motions, Robert, since it's two separate committees. Yeah. You want it separate? Okay. I, I, Pete Hubble. Just keeps it a little clearer. The Assessment Review Board. Is there a I'll second? I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, a motion to appoint Bill Hamill as an alternate to the Planning Board. Is there a second? Sure, I'll second, second that. Okay, Sarah seconds. Um, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye so moved. Thank you all very much. Um, we do have correspondence from Jean Dunce. She is resigning from the Senior Services Committee. If you are interested in joining the Senior Services Committee, there are openings. Okay. Um, we're at that point of the evening where we have our board and committee reports. Item number 11 on the agenda. Sarah, would you be kind enough to summarize the planning board report for March? Sure. Um. So the planning board was pretty active in March. They had a bunch of different things they were reviewing. Um, there was the Bard Behringer House, which was a site plan application um, to construct a 920 square foot addition to an existing Victorian era building in um, the Scenic Corridor Overlay District. They reviewed a special use permit application for a pool, an in-ground pool, also in the R1.5 district. Um, special use permit to approve a 420 square foot accessory apartment on the first floor of a private residence and um, a bunch of other things will just kind of come through here something for a Funshine Nursery School a special use permit application and a site plan review to replace a demolished 1307 square foot building with a new 15 1,540 square foot building at Funshine Daycare and Nursery School. Um, and an amended site plan application to construct a 2,000 square foot self-storage building and a 1,200 square foot off-street parking area um, on Route 9 in the TND Commercial Center District. That's by Red Hook Self-Storage. So as far as I can see from here, they just continue to review all of those and there's no specific action that they took on any of them. So you'll want to follow those planning board minutes and agendas if you're interested in any of those. Great. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, Jim, there's a ZBA uh, report if you be kind enough to summarize for us. Right. This this month, uh, in March, there was, a, on March 8th, was a meeting. There was one um, presentation before the board um, for the board to review. It was, for a lot on uh, Country Club Drive, which is out near the golf course there. That's an old, old um, subdivision around that lake, and probably most of the structures and homes around there have different variances. But the people have this one piece of property down applied actually for three variances because they're very tight lots with a lot of constraints. And actually this variance had been granted a number of years ago but was never acted on by the prior owner. So they have to reapply again. So during the review process, they were told of everything they have to do, and they gave the problems with the constraints of the lot. And it was set up for public hearing on April 
12th of this month. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, we have an assessor's report uh, for Bill to report, but he's not with us as is evident. Um, the assessor's office would like to let you know that they have processed, computed, and filed 1,200 renewal exemption forms. They've helped seniors with applications, answered questions, returned numerous phone messages about exemptions and values, processed several new agricultural exemptions, and numerous veterans' exemptions. With the help of our data collector, we try to keep up to date on all building permits, have taken new photos and calculated square footage and added new assessments on all. They processed and filed 50 new sales from the real property tax report. They are about to send letters to residents that have not returned exemption forms, and they are getting ready for grievance day. Grievance day is, as you may know, is always the fourth Tuesday of the month in May, and this year it is May 23rd, if you want to jot that down on your calendar. Um, the assessor has met with New York State Real Property Service uh, to facilitate an analysis of the role, <coughs> updated valuation tables accordingly, and determine whether our equalization rate will remain at 100% for the upcoming assessment role, which I believe it will. Um, we continue to strive to keep things in order and fair for all residents with our limited time in the office. That's from the assessor's office. Building and zoning, Jim, there's a, uh, a total sheet. And uh, for the monthly report of March from the building and zoning department, there were 10 permits issued, 21 inspections, 21 COCCs issued, three complaints followed up on with a total revenue of $1,580. Okay. I do have an animal control report if you want it. I don't think it got copied to everybody. Um, sure. Why don't you report on animal control, sir? Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure. Sue, maybe we can talk later about. Um, I'm not sure how these would get to Jackie so she'd know the. Or I'm not sure what the. Somehow they're ending up in my mailbox. I'm sure you have a record of them, but we should put the yeah, dog control yeah. report in there somehow. I don't know. Um, anyway, so these are for January and February. Um, there was one nuisance dog report in January and one in February and two loose dog reports for each of those months. And the animal control officer, who is um, employed by the Dutchess <coughs> County SPCA under our contract, um, responded to both of those and checked those out. Um, so the owners have been notified that it's an issue and you know, they're addressing it. And there was one, one cat that had to be rehomed, but it seems like she's on top of it. So. All the contact information is on our website. If you have any concerns now that we're getting, we're getting into, you know, the dog season, dog season <laughs> the time when dogs somehow end up being loose more often in the sort of spring and summer and fall. Um, I guess because the weather's nicer and it's light out longer. Okay. But please keep your animals, you know, on your own property, safer for them and for everybody else, and including other animals. And if you need to get your, if you have a dog, you need to have it licensed. That's a state law. Come see our lovely town clerk or check it out on the website. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, Harry, would you like to report on purchasing activity? Yes. Uh, this month, uh, we had uh, total orders in the amount of just over $50,000. Trees were removed for the right of way for the, for the sidewalk work to be done on Route 9. That was just com completed, I believe, last week. Um, we have uh, we have talked to contractors to get in a um, uh, an, an option for for putting insula insulating uh, the roof of this building and the outside walls. Um, with uh, foam and insulate sprayed on foam. It's an elaborate process, but it will be um, something we've been needing to do and wanting to do for a long time. And 
we also are working on an estimate for the electric vehicle sta uh, charging station that will go into the rear of the parking lot. Right. That is a work in progress. Right. Great. Um, thank you very much, Harry. And yes, we would like to uh, let you know, if you did not already notice, the trees. There were a few trees along the roof of the sidewalks. A uh, sidewalk project that's uh, several years in the making is actually beginning on Route 9. And uh, there will be uh, replacement foliage going up once the uh, project nears completion. And uh, you will start to see in the next couple of months uh, construction um, occurring on Route 9 south towards Holy Cow. Jim, would you be kind enough to read the Water District report, please? Yep. <clears throat> this is um, for the for the month of February uh, generated by the work session in March for the Water District and Water Board. The uh, both wells are, are operating adequately. The pump volumes in well number one is 242 gallons a minute. Well number two, 252 gallons a minute. All the you know the cow equipment, the fidelity, the chlorine residual, everything was was fine. We have uh, the filters are operating satisfactory. We have spare cartridges as always and spare pouring on hand. There are nine outstanding work orders that the, the operator is going to be focusing on. Uh, you know, included valves and the the, uh, the the well. They decided to postpone the the rehab of well two until 2018. It's operating fine now, but you know it was recommended that since we had that well one rehab that we should consider that at some point so that uh, Hank has put that off to 2018 because it's fine at this time. He asked Crawford for a proposal to make recommendations for updates to include considerations for replacing current configuration with variable frequency drive controls. It would provide considerable savings on electricity on the pumps, you know, rather than just on or off uh, type of thing. And. Um, the work items for 2017 is the water tank inspection. That's the big one that uh, they plan on doing this year. Uh, the Ross valve inspection was completed in 2017. They're considering moving that defunct, unneeded hydrant on Alder Street and fence repair at the water tower is on the agenda for this year. Great, that's that. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, there's a task force report. Bill is not here to make it. Um, we talked about the dates of the meeting and they discussed <coughs> and examined um, proposing to uh, put forward to the town board amendments to um, that would deal with uh, solar photovoltaic projects within the town. As you know, our community, like most communities, we're trying to figure out what type of regulations they want on these large solar installations within the community. We, uh, they discussed um, revising the zoning district, the B1 district, next to the hamlet of Upper Red Hook, and fashioning something more like a hamlet business district. He had continued to review concepts regarding signage for the town of Red Hook. Sarah, would you like to report on CAC? Sure. Sorry, let me find it here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is, Lori's calling this their annual report for 2016. Right. So I'll just go really quickly. As you know, if you have paid attention to past meetings, we, um, had a very successful Solarize Northern Duchess campaign along with, um, it was a collaboration of seven municipalities in Duchess County. Um, and that resulted in at least 80 new residential installations and one commercial that we know of. So that was very successful. Um, they've continued their amphibian migration and road crossing project. In fact, I believe last night was one of the nights where citizen scientists and volunteers were helping amphibians migrate across roadways to get to their Woodland pools. Um, so that continues as a, both a community education activity and a, a physical outreach 
Um, and uh, CEC was part of helping the town achieve our clean energy community status. Uh, they continue to administer the Ruth OJ Scholarship and um, facilitate the DEC Environmental Camp Scholarship, um, both of which uh, provide money to local students for various sort of conservation activities. Um, and they participate in the Sockhill Watershed Community Group, which is uh, doing water sampling and other community education efforts around our watershed. Um, and then they've also provided um, miscellaneous grant support for things like our electronic vehicle charging station and the culvert study. Um, they did the e-waste day in January and they continue to review planning, board projects, and um, kind of, you know, just generally keep tabs on conservation related projects in the town. So we're grateful for their service. And new this year is their energy energized Red Hook campaign that I know we've spoken of before, and you'll be hearing lots more about that in the coming months and years. But um, basically, it's a another community education campaign that um, helps homeowners get free energy assessments through a grant um, from the state. So if you'd like to know more about how to upgrade your home to be more affordable and energy. Um, energy efficient, then you should reach out to the CAC and do we have information on our website? I'm assuming we do. I, I believe we do, but we will have more actually. Yeah, there will be lots of started will be workshops on website, and so. there'll be lots of free workshops and um, opportunities for people to learn more about that opportunity. But that that's like a three year commitment. Um, so that's what's new for them. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Harry, as always, I beg of you to try to <laughs> summarize the Rec Commission's... Well, 20 pages of the Rec Commission report. I, you know, it's um, and it means, it's so it, impressive, it, but <laughs> we don't have enough time to read all of it. Um, yes. Hmm. It, uh, basically, working on spring cleanup and doing re repair work in anticipation of the beginning of the uh, opening the park, activities in the park will begin April next week. Uh, the water will be turned on on Monday. <coughs> people should know. Um, that's been a, that's an issue. People have been looking for water, but we were loath to turn it on until we knew it wasn't going to freeze. Um, and uh, we need a, a director for the summer program. <coughs> happily to take happy to take uh, uh, resumes from people who who would be able to do that. We have a lot of the summer rec program uh, workers coming back. People have been concerned about the locust tree in the playground. That that will be removed before, um, very shortly, before there are children running around under it. The tennis court rebuild is on the agenda. It'll, it, it'll be done late this summer or in the fall if we can do it this year. Um, and uh, um, basically, basically that, that's been done. You know, John's also done a lot of cleanup work at St. Margaret's and burned, burned uh, a lot of the, the scrap wood that was down there, too. I would just add to that that we also just heard that we need a new um, director for the T-ball program for the summer, which mm -hmm. is not anything close to the overall rec summer program type, it's not like a full-time position, it's, I don't even know if it's a paid position, it may just be volunteer, but we're going to need somebody to run volunteer. that. volunteer, yeah. We're the going director's to need somebody to run position that. is a, a six, for a six-week program for the summer play, playgrounds, um, camp, it's uh, mornings five days a week. Yeah, so the one Harry's talking about is a paid position, but right. the other one, the T-ball coordinator, I, I believe is a volunteer, but the program a lot of families count on, so we agree. Check with the work commission. Yeah, you can send in information to the town hall if you're interested. Yes. Um, we would also like to let you know, because the park will open up soon, we hope, uh, as the weather improves. So if you're not aware, this year we brought recycling containers into the rec park. So we would ask you to um, make a veil of those containers, please. Um, 
as, as best as you can. Look for them. We'll try and uh, keep them in obvious locations. Um, a, a very strong plea to please don't put anything in there except for um, recyclable materials because if the batch becomes contaminated, if the truck has a certain level of contamination in it, everything in the truck gets thrown into the dump and the landfill. So it's important that um, we have as much cooperation as we can get in that endeavor. And uh, we thank you in advance for that. So um, we have a senior services report. Sarah? Yes. This is the senior services committee monthly report for March. Um, the committee discussed a postcard mailing that would um, promote the programming at the new community center. So those are planned to go out sometime in April. Um, and so they mainly discussed that and having a table at Apple Blossom Day. And I think most of their discussion recently has been around programming at the community center. And there is still an ongoing um, oral history project that they're doing with um, Red Hook high school students that is exciting and we're hoping we'll hear a lot more about that in the coming months and um, I believe they're going to try to maybe even show some of that at Apple Blossom Day or maybe it's that they're interviewing people at Apple Blossom Day and then eventually we'll have some kind of presentation of the information but either way that's an exciting project. Good. Thank you very much. Um, those are all the board and committee reports that we have. For correspondence, I have just one, and I think it's important that the, uh, the folks at home hear it. Um, it's correspondence from the Town of Rhinebeck Recreation Director, Elaine Fernandez, and um, she is uh, beginning the conversation about the Red Hook Rhinebeck Dog Park. Um, essentially, and I, I won't read the whole thing, but They've been having continuing problems uh, at the park where uh, folks are letting their dogs run free on the sports fields. And consequently, the sports teams are having to clean up uh, the dog poop, if you will, from the fields before they, they can use them. And um, they talk about the um, fact that signage isn't helping and they are now contemplating doing away with the dog park because it's become um, such an obstacle for the adjoining sports field. Mm -hmm. And so they are going to discuss it with their town board and I wanted to bring that to your attention. I don't know that action is going to take place in the next couple of weeks, but um, it's something that we should get together with them and, and see if perhaps we have some options here or whether or not they're, they've sort of reached their limit. So, Sarah, I don't know if maybe you'd like to uh, triage, but I know you're all things dog with the town of Red Hook and you just would love to have one more thing on your plate uh, related to dogs, right? Yeah, I would, um, okay. but I will try to reach out. And sure. I've had some discussions with Elaine and with Elizabeth, and um, let's see, I know it's an amenity that uh, I think actually the majority of folks uh, that were looking for this came from Rhinebeck, right, right? I think that the yeah, big was push was Rhinebeck, if I remember correctly. Right, I think so. I'm trying yeah. to remember Paul Piastro, right? And Dick, no, uh, Bruce from their board. Is Paul actually a Red Hook resident? I think Paul he is, is, right? Paul is, yeah. So it was sort of a joint venture, I think, from the beginning. Um, yeah. It may yeah, be Paul, something I know Paul we and don't. Paul Bruce Washburn. Yeah, Did Bruce Washburn. Right. I think we, I mean, we don't discuss it very often here. I don't know how many residents even know about it. I know at a recent discussion about, like, Things we could do with the rec park, someone said, Oh, and we could have a dog. Right. <laughs> dog wasn't unaware of that. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people may not even be aware of it. Yeah. So, um, 
Maybe it's not our problem. I probably, I probably <laughs> had about five people ask for an application. Yeah, because so you're really supposed to come and get sort of like a little... Well, they have to make sure they have their license. They have to make sure dog, they have a dog right? license. And then we have applications and they have to take their license down to Ryan Right. Is, it, is there a cost or is they just... I think just it's $20 yeah. for the That's year. Okay. It's sort of like an entry fee, right? Yeah, so. yeah, just to help maintain. And how many people <laughs> would you say generally? Honestly, I don't know how many yeah. are involved. So I don't I've drive on that few. road very often. Well, I'll talk to Elaine and see what she... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we, will, we do want the folks at home to be aware that this is being contemplated and mm -hmm. we'd like your input on it. Okay, um, that's all I have this evening. Does anybody else have anything for tonight? Um, I'm going to make a motion that we go into attorney-client, but before we, before I do, is there any other public comments? Okay. We're going to do a tree commission report. I don't have one here, I don't think. Well, I have the minutes. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I could, if you want, usually we... We see, you know, usually the report is a little different from the minutes, but I could read from the minutes if you think that would be, should I just do that? I mean, we should at least mention the Arbor Day, right? right? right. We're going tomorrow to um, Albany for the, the Tree City Lunch. Right. Why don't you come, come up to the microphone and you can go ahead and do it if you want to. You probably know it better than I do. Yeah, there's a contingency of us yeah. from the group going. The car is filled, and we also have one from the Village Green, a, a young girl, uh, Juliana Pearson. Right. And um, Arbor Day is uh, Saturday, April 29th, from 10 to 2. Um, Cody is going to bring his uh, tree turnout gear and, and show us all that. And um, he has uh, knots that he can show how to do. And we're going to have samples of trees so you can count the rings on the trees and different samples of wood types, um, some games that the kids can identify, feely boxes and uh, information, just general information, and we're giving away seedlings. Again, right. there's a hundred seedlings, free to Red Hook uh, residents, first come, first serve. So that's Saturday. Saturday, April 29th, 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Here. In, in the parking lot. Yes. Yeah. And here, inside. And the mm -hmm. seedlings for the folks at home who are... Uh, the seedlings, are, they're free. Um, this is a different variety. I pick them out, so... Okay. Uh, Whatever ones they want, they can have just one per family, so that you know we get <laughs> a lot of spread. <laughs> and you've also okay. been working on. I know the committee worked some on tree pruning. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of pruning in the, the rec park. Uh, we're working on the pool signage, uh, cutting out some of the <laughs> overgrown stuff, and uh, we'll be planting. Uh, Mergendal tree will be replanted. That'll be a red oak. Um, and the tree here will be planted. Um, so we have a, a lot of plantings going on. There'll yeah, be it's five just, plantings like that. Really. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're doing, I know the committee does some things with the school district too. Right. The, the, the uh, Eleanor Friary has been heading that up for years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's working with the children, um, this post a contest. And then we judge the posters at her house. She's she's great. She's putting on a luncheon, which she does every year. Yeah. And uh, again, just about everybody's coming to this from the group. So it's a lot of involvement with it. Uh, the one thing I would just mention, I think, um, I don't know, has Cody sent his he official said he request? Did. Okay, because I haven't seen it, but maybe I missed it because I missed the one of the meetings. Do we know if we sent it by email? Okay. On our okay. Our right. I'll just double check just to make sure because <laughs> I keep I, I, yeah I keep seeing that, that his I'll name is or that there's still a vacancy so I but I know he's an active no, member of your committee yeah yeah so I'll just make a note to check in on that and we'll make sure, make sure that because I want to make him official. Anyone who's interested in you know they can come and yeah our meetings are open to the public right, right. and, and the they're always on the town always calendar because I get here early. The front door is open. You Your minutes. You I have to get that. Okay. In. The tree committee uh, minutes, I can attest, are promptly posted <laughs> for all to see. The meetings are always noticed on the calendar. Excellent. Right. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. And you need to get somebody for the Act and Open Space to do the minutes for them. We will. Please. We will. Okay. Thank you very much, Linda. Um,
At this time, I uh, would entertain a motion to go into attorney client. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for coming.